and all and this is another episode I suppose or video of using Figma and Tableau. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how to create components and variants in Figma and how you can ultimately use these in either your prototyping designs or actually as potential images and button icon variations in Tableau. If you haven't seen my prototyping video uh, check that out there's prototyping one out already. So clearly we have to start with a definition. Um, in case you haven't heard of components, there certainly was a time I did not, and I didn't realize how valuable they could be. So components are elements. Uh, they could be anything, you know, buttons, icons, but, you know, menus, maybe filters, objects and elements that you can use across your designs. Uh, these can help with standardization. So particularly if you're working on a team, you can create a bunch of these components and anyone on your team can use them. Additionally, you can have um, concepts for, in this example, these buttons. Um, potentially the first button is when the button is not clicked, the second is when someone hovers over it, and the third is when it has been clicked. Um, so it helps you know, keep everyone on the same page and uh, rowing in the same direction essentially. For yourself, it can be just useful so you don't have to continually recreate objects or elements that you've already created once before. Now, of course, you can always copy paste, but this allows you um, to more easily grab a component. The coolest thing here is that once you've created these components, if you change the main component, all the uses of that component will change. For example, if I have used this first green click here button, let's say I've used that in five different dashboard designs, um, you know, within the suite of reports I'm designing, and I need to change the language from click here to something else such as view options. If I change that text in the main component, that text will change in all the times that I've used that component or that button in my designs. So I don't have to go through all five of my dashboard designs and change them one by one. This is pretty cool, I think. All right, so how do you make them? So first you would create your design just as you see here on the left. Here's my little click here button. You can right click on that. And first of all, keep in mind, you'll wanna have the object entirely selected or already grouped together, perhaps. Maybe you've already named it, that is actually perfect or ideal, you'll right click and, and select create component. What will happen is the layers will get nested into this little purple frame, which is a special component icon. And in fact, if you're doing making, you know, a bunch of these, as you know, I was just showing before with a bunch of buttons, perhaps you don't have to do this one by one, you can select all of them. And up at the top, once you selected a bunch of, you know, grouped objects, at the top, you'll see that component icon again, and you can say create multiple components or even create a component set right from here. That is also another place where you can just do the create component when you've uh, selected uh, some layers. So now you have some components. So let's just say, now you wanna use them in other places. So all, the local file components, meaning within your Figma file across any pages, will show up if you collect, select the assets. It's right next to the layers pane on the left. And it'll show all the components in your local file. And then it'll break them down you know, by different ty component types or different pages that they may be on. You can just click and drag it out into your view to use it. And if you want to view where the main component lives, it, it has to be somewhere in these files. Um, you can right click on the component. Here's an example, a little star. And I right clicked and said, go to main component. It says, I don't have access. Uh, that's because this particular icon I got from the Figma community. So I don't own the main component 
location. So I can't actually get to it to make any changes to it. However, if it is in your local file, you can actually go to the main component, particularly if you want to change it, as I mentioned earlier, and have those changes flow throughout uh, all uses of that component. And here's an example right here of here's a component, and I've been able to put it out on the page and use it as it exactly looks there. Now, variants are essentially variations of that component. <laughs> so um, think about it if you um, have one button design and it happens to be black and white. And then you want to also have other times you may want it to be blue and white or red and white or what have you or filled versus uh, not filled or stroke versus not stroke, what have you. Once you create all of those, you can actually have them grouped together into variants. So it's one component, meaning it all looks the same from a perspective of it is a button perhaps with the same text or what have you, but maybe it's the color that changes. And so you want to be able to use the same style, the same button, but in different instances, swap out the colors. Maybe they're your brand colors and you have four different color brand colors in your brand and you want to have four different buttons, but you don't want them to all look the same, right? So instead of creating um, or having to drag in like four different components, which you can totally do, you can create variants. So, and I'll demo this in a, in a few minutes once we get to the end of this overview. So once I have, so here's my example, I have four, um, four icons, one in a color hue of just purples and one in a color hue of blue and orange. What I can do is group all these, so they have to be components first, you have to have already made each of these a component, and then you can group them, and on the right-hand panel, you'll see an option that shows up, it says combine as variants. Once you've done that, they'll be grouped into this purple frame. Now, when you access them on your assets panel again, you'll see just one, um, one component variant, that says icons in this case. I named them all icon and then with some other details, which I'll, I'll mention about naming in a second. I can drag this onto the pane and then change which one I want. I can change, do I want to look at the light bulb and do I want to pick the blue or the purple one? So here you can see this actually right here on the left. Um, so in this example, I have uh, six icons each one has two varieties, a green and a blue, or purple, sorry. So over here, you'll see the parent component is demo icons. That is what the parent component is, all these together. Property one is a bell. I, so there's six properties, or six um, variables within property one, and property two is purple, and there's two variables, green and purple. The way you achieve this or make this happen is you have to name your components in a particular way so that you get these properties. So first of all, you'll, and you can do this however you need to kind of stratify the components. Um, in my case, you know, I've named the, the main group names the first thing, so I've said icon, and then slash property one, so maybe it's the name of the icon, the type of button, or the purpose of it, and then property two. Maybe some other details, such as this one has a color, this is a shadow one, shadow two, size, small, medium, large. You'll see here in the example, we've got demo icons is the main name, bell is the property one, purple is property two. That's what you see over here, demo icons, bell, purple. Okay, and you can do this however makes the most sense for whatever you're creating, but you use this backslash to uh, kind of evoke this concept or this organization. Now, sometimes, you know, another great thing is that you have all these resources created, perhaps. So think about in designing in Tableau, um, creating components or variants can give you kind of a, a, a leg up on your work effort that you don't have to start from scratch and, and you know, perhaps make all these different icons or whatever elements you might be using. 
or if you're prototyping, you know, making another chart or another example of a filter or drop-down filter. So instead, what you can do is um, you can take the component from the assets pane, or if you're in the same file, you can copy and paste that component. And it's still a component, right? Like it still will take on the properties of the main component that created it. However, let's say, look, I just wanted this button, but honestly, I need it to be slightly different. But I don't need to like create the whole thing from scratch. So what I can do is I can right click on it and click detach instance, which essentially allows you to now have this object and do whatever you want with it. So you can now change it in any way and it doesn't impact the main component. Um, but obviously know that, you know, if you need to change this particular element again, and you've used it in multiple places, you're gonna have to change them all. So it now just becomes a regular grouping of layers. Um, but that can be really helpful if you're using some other community icons or what have you, and you don't have access to the main component, you can detach it. And then obviously, you know, make your changes and, and create a new one if you want. You'll also see in this example, when I've right clicked on the button that I've put in here, here's a quick place of swapping, um, you know, changing the variant or swapping the instance or going to the main component. That Those are all show up once you have a variant from a component. Okay, let's go to the example now. Okay, so here I have uh, the same example. So I have all of my created icons that I have personally <laughs> manually created. They look pretty good for creating icons, which is not something I, uh, I've done before. Um, okay, so what you'll see is, where am I here? All oh, my things are open. Let's go to, there we go, okay. So I've already started some of these. You'll see it says icon membership pink. So you'll see here, I'm gonna do this for these ones. Oop. We'll double click here and I'm gonna say again, it's gonna be icon, oop, this is gonna be, which one am I on here? Hold on a second. This one. Oh, no, I want this one. So icon, this is events, green. This one is icon, events, pink. Icon, oop, resources, pink. And the last one is icon, resources. Green. Okay, so as I mentioned, so now I have all these things that are just grouped objects, you know, grouped layers, sorry. So as I said, I will right click and drag, or click and drag and select from the top, create multiple components. So now I have all my components. Keep them selected. You'll see on the right over here, it says combine as variants. Easy as that. I'll combine them as a variant. Fantastic. Again, you see right now, I have my purple outline, I have all of my um, components, and you can see on the side, the property and the different types of values that are available. I can click on this little filter and see the values for property one. I can rename this too. So this is, you know, this would be like, mm, I don't know, icon type name. And you know, this one is gonna be color. All right, so now if I wanna use these, so this is the main component now. So these are here. Now when I wanna use it, I go over to my left on assets. Um, you'll see right here where we are. Uh, using this file, let's go down here. No, I'm not using this file. Making variants, that's the file. Here's my icon, so I'll drag this in. It looks exactly the same. Now if I wanna change it, again, right from the right over here, I can say, yeah, I need to change this to membership. And I need the pink one. So how quickly is it that throughout I can change on the fly which component um, or variant of the icon this component is? Now you'll also see, watch this, if I go back to the main component and let's say I need to change this color, 
and we're going to change it to orange and yellow. Immediately, my icon changed as well because I adjusted the main component and now my instance or my use of that component has also changed. So I think this is a fantastic thing to know in Figma if you've never done it before or didn't know about it. Um, man, it would have saved me a lot of time early on. So I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you so much um, for tuning in and follow me on Twitter um, if you'd like. And if you have any other you know, things you want to learn about Figma or ways in which Figma and Tab you use Figma and Tableau and you'd want to learn some more, you know, feel free to, to drop me a note um, or a comment and let me know. Thanks so much.